you passed your luck check. It's the No Class guys coming back at you again. Eddie did a video a while back, and we did one together talking about coming from 5th edition D&D to uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics from Goodman Games. Just hitting a little topics, another one we were talking about was the dice chain. And so in 5th edition, you're used to advantage, disadvantage concepts like that. In Dungeon Crawl Classics, something that emulates that, but yet it's unique to DCC, is the dice chain. The dice go from the die three all the way up to the die 30. And so basically most roles are like traditional role playing games at D20. But if you have what would be an advantageous situation, the judge game master here, the judge will tell you to go up the chain one or two steps. Or if you're, it's a, uh, ad, a disadvantage situation, you go down the dice chain appropriately. And then there's other times where they've decided for whatever reason, you know, different dice are used like uh, the dwarf has the shield bash. That's a D14. Uh, but if for some reason it was advantageous, you would go up and down from there. Um, and so it's just neat how the different dice work in this concept, you know, moving up and down the dice chain as well. Uh, you know, for some people that are coming to the game initially are like, you know, wow, you know, that's, that's quite a bit for a tube of dice, but you'll find that you don't pay 11, 12 bucks for a seven set of dice. This is seven more dice. So really you're getting twice the dice, which is hence why it costs a little bit more. Uh, also there's the purple sorcerer, uh, games has their crawlers companion. That app has a virtual dice roller on that. So if you're before, you know, you're try before you buy, if you will, but that's the dice chain. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Here what we have is the magical dice chain in action, 14 dice of power to make your DCC game hum, and unlike any other, the nice tube of dice that we have here, we have Cesarekin Solids, which I highly recommend for beginning players because they're all the different colors. Um, let's see if this is a good example. Yeah, you can see, for example, the Weird Frontiers are all the same color, which is nice. But this makes it a lot easier for new players to spot the difference right at the beginning. You can say, hey, uh, pick up that black die or pick up your uh, yellow. I think in typical sets, you'd have each and every one of them different. So this one might be a slightly updated set where you've got some of the same. But again, the you can say the, the cube or the round uh, die. Uh, another thing is since we have some odd shaped dice here, most of them you can determine what die it is by finding the number and flipping it over or finding the one and flipping it over. D20 is a good example. The ones that it doesn't work with, I think maybe the D5 and the D7, those are their own little odd ducks. Uh, a lot of times in the dice chain, we will talk about improved die you can roll your improved die or your reduced die so if we were talking about a d20 for example as being your standard attack die if we were going to give you your improved die you could roll a d24 and if we were going to give you your reduced die you could be at a d16 here you may ask yourself what are all these fine fine dice used for why do i need a d5 and a d7 the thief's luck Score as he evolves from level to level will roll all the way from a D3 to a D16. So that's why you'll have these at different levels. Uh, the Warrior's D die will start at a D3 and work its way up to the D100 or D10. The D100 here is when you've got both of the dice together as a percentage. Uh, sometimes you'll see. Uh, D5s and 7s also used as weapon damage dice. Uh, the D30 and D24 especially will be the ones that convince you that you need a dice tray. But beyond that, that's a quick look at your dice chain. Thanks.